Hey this is Sayyam Botani and you're listening to Chai Time Data Science a podcast for data science enthusiasts where i interview practitioners researchers and calculators about their journey experience and talk all things about data science Hello and welcome to Quarantine Kaggle Content with Chai, the CTDS dot show. In this episode, I am honored to be interviewing the, at the time of recording, first and only fourth year Kaggle Grandmaster Abhishek Thakur. The last time Abhishek was on the show, he was the only and the first three tier Kaggle Grandmaster, Kaggle Grandmaster in three different categories. And one year later. has given me the privilege to interview him again on the show as a four, as a forex grandmaster this interview really picks off and connects with the previous one we continue into what he's been up to he's been creating many amazing things for the community abhishek now has an amazing youtube channel and also has a book coming out that's titled approaching almost any machine learning problem we talk all about both of these and the fourth tier where he's become a grandmaster data sets we discuss about his process and his motivation behind the youtube channel if you haven't please pause the video right now go ahead and subscribe to his channel and his motivation behind the book and the origins of the book abhishek also shares an inside scoop if he'll ever be writing a second book or a third book or a fourth one so please stay tuned for that this conversation also has many interesting ideas about how can you do better on kaggle how should you approach kaggle or any machine learning problem with that highlight he is my conversation with forex kagil grandmaster abhishek thakur please enjoy the show i wanted to be interviewing the only at the time of interviewing four tier kagil grandmaster abhishek thakur Thank you so much for joining me again on the podcast, Abhishek. Thank you very much, Sanyam, and uh, I'm honored to be here the second time. I think a lot of people don't get that opportunity, <laughs> so yeah, really honored to be here. A lot of people don't agree to my second request, so thank you for saying uh, yes. I, I don't, I don't think that's the problem. <laughs> so uh, I, I would disagree, but we'll keep, we'll keep going in that loop. I, I want to start by talking about uh, the fourth tier where you become a grandmaster. Last time you were on the show, you were a three tier grandmaster, and the fourth category didn't exist. Yeah, uh, that's true. So I, th- I think they started the fourth category two or four months or five months after uh, I became the three ex grandmaster. I think around and October, if I'm not around wrong. October. Yeah. So. Yeah, I had a few datasets before that. I had some datasets I had deleted, so I was <laughs> uh, I was not happy about them. So for the people who don't know, there is a dataset category in which you share the dataset, and you get uh, if people like them, you they upload them. People create kernels based on them. You can also create tasks and all that stuff. And there are uh, these categories from novice to grandmaster in datasets. So. Yeah, it took me a while. Um, so I, I shared a lot of datasets before, and um, I had deleted a few of them, and then I started sharing more and more datasets, but relevant to ongoing competitions. So I think they got a lot of upvote because of because of that, because it was related to ongoing competitions. Like it was one of them was pre-trained models, so that has more than forty pre-trained models. So uh, yeah, I think uh, it, it was it was quite a challenge. in a new category but it went well in the end it took took a while but it was okay how was the experience uh, are you still maintaining some of these data sets because i i've only created one that also along with rohan and uh, it, i realize it's it's much tougher than it looks at least for me yeah so i uh, so some of the data sets i'm i'm maintaining obviously 
so some are uh, my own stuff like i created a library so i created a data set for it um it's it's on pip but i just created a data set because i'm i'm going to be doing a lot of heavy development so i've also seen that there is a nice feature in which you can get the data from github and then you just have to click to update and it will just clone the repository on its own and update the data so it's 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 quite nice and um, i'm using that feature quite a lot and then i have some other data sets that i use frequently like hugging faces transformers so it's there uh, they have it on uh, kaggle docker but i have also created a data set because they keep updating um, very fast so they yeah. move really fast and then everybody wants to try the new things so yeah uh, this and i think you're the only person that can answer this uh, now there are four tiers on kaggle data sets is gamified other two are also gamified uh, <laughs> many people fall into the trap of please upload my xyz Uh, yeah. work. Any any advice for such people? I mean, for 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 people like who people who ask or people who vote. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it depends. So, um, I have also shared like if I if I created a kernel or I created a data set, I social media accounts, but I don't write please upload me. I I just shared like okay here I've created a kernel and you can learn about this 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 thing, blah 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 and here is the link, and if people <laughs> like it they upload it but I I don't go from person to person asking okay you have to upload it. Uh, like like you said there are two things making it visible and uh, the other like the not so good side side is just spamming people. So, yeah, uh, sp- spamming people is not not really very good. Um, obviously you can. you can handle it in a different way so you can if you're talking to someone and you're discussing some stuff so you can then you can say okay uh, related to this i created this kernel hmm. you uh, if you have views then let me know if you have any kind of opinion on this kernel so you can you can say things like this but you cannot go and say upload my kernel <laughs> i want to become a kernel grandmaster it doesn't work like that yeah do you have any other tips for making uh, someone's work more visible someone who feels like their work is still underrated and they deserve more votes like they really put in a few months maybe of their time into creating a kernel or a data set um yeah i mean so when 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 a new competition starts so if we are talking about kaggle so most exposure you will get for your kernels is during the first couple of weeks Yeah. so try to create a kernel during that time and because a lot of people are looking for ideas around eda or uh, different kind of formats of data sets so if you have if you have a image competition which has images of size 1024 cross 1024 so it's large image size and may, many people cannot download hundreds of gigabytes of data right yeah they will look for some kind of resized version so you can create a data set which is resized version of that data set obviously after looking at the rules and regulations so if the rules allow you to do that then do it so these kind of things and uh, kernels are also very important sometimes uh, pe- some people think like uh, only the high scoring kernels get votes but it's not like that i've seen a lot of kernels with uh, low scores uh, but they have they have good content so they get yeah. get votes people uh, distinguish between the four tiers as they should uh, do you have a suggestion for someone who's starting on kaggle discussions and discussions is the low hanging fruit for everyone because they just want to maybe move up in the rankings uh, which one would you suggest for someone <laughs> who's who's there to learn S- suggestion for uh, discussion rankings no a suggestion for which which tier should they aim for because uh, oh, people which tier fall they should aim for if they aim for competition they will get everything else eventually so everyone should aim for competitions not for kernels because if you when you're doing a competition let's say you you are doing pretty good or you're learning stuff so you can create kernels based on that you can create data sets you can have discussions based on that and yeah. those discussions are not just going to be like great work thank you very much so <laughs> not not these kind of discussions and okay you can get one vote for that a person will like your comment obviously but uh, if if you focus on competitions i think everything else uh, will come to you eventually awesome now i want to talk 
talk about okay. another another thing that you started your youtube channel can you tell us the motivation and i think you put out uh, more than 20 more than 30 videos by now yeah i started my youtube channel 6 uh, months ago uh, i think it was end of december during christmas time and uh, yeah and now i think i have around 30 31 videos something like that i i don't post a video very often so i just once a week just once a week or just whenever i whenever i get time have you seen the others <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that's once a day so it's less than that <laughs> so uh, yeah it's once a week and uh, i um, i don't i don't have a kind of so anything like if if i find something interesting i will make a video about it related to data data science and machine learning obviously so if there is a new competition on kaggle if i find it interesting then probably i'll make a tutorial about it you you created i think these are different series all together uh, many series are ongoing which uh, can you maybe talk a bit about all of them and which ones are your current favorite series series of, of videos oh on my channel yes uh i started with applied machine learning series so that has different episodes i think we have reached episode 7 or 8 till now and those are 45 minutes to 1 hour tutorial videos on how you can start from scratch uh in applied machine learning so there's very little theory there and uh, i i show like how do you apply these kind of things in different scenarios i think that one needs a new video soon so um others are like uh, everybody wanted me to make video about not everybody but a lot of people wanted me to make video about bert mm. uh during that time so i my plan was something else my plan was to start from basics and then go in steps but okay. people want uh, people want a lot of things a lot of new things so i kept getting suggestions and i saw that okay no one no one has made a video on how to train bert on tpus so let's make a tutorial about that uh, so there are some videos for bert there are some videos like where i'm just sitting and talking these kind of videos uh, i think that this not a lot but you i think you can see who one in the background there yeah <laughs> so this is the only one and uh, then there are there is this uh, tips and tricks in which i make short videos 10 15 minutes something useful that you can do in python so it can not not be related to machine learning but probably it's useful for data scientists and then there is a talks series in which uh, uh, anybody is uh, uh, anybody can join as a guest speaker so you just have to fill out a form and you have to have a project which is not commercial in nature so then you can you can you can come and you can present it to hundreds of people but yeah that that has been going quite well i've seen like more than 200 people attend those sessions the live sessions and uh, yeah it's uh, i've i've learned a lot from those speakers you you've created kernels you've created data sets you've given us many interesting discussions you are now creating videos on youtube channel uh, where, where, where do you become evil where, where is the evil mm-hmm. plan when does that come into the picture it has always been there <laughs> so no there is nothing evil um so i just want to share what i've learned or what i'm learning with the community and as long as the community finds it useful i will share if one day people say now stop then i'm going to stop so it's going to be like that um but i hope nobody will say no to free knowledge right so um yeah i i just share whenever i feel like sharing and uh, uh, people uh, as long as people are liking it i will keep sharing so there is no kind of evil side yet do you do you also have business plans in place because you're already creating so much content or uh, do you plan to take it into a next step eventually uh i i don't have any kind of uh, business plans right now but uh, maybe in future it depends okay so uh, you mentioned all of these series that you are creating um can you talk us through the behind the scenes of how much effort goes into these videos because of course it takes a lot of video you also live code in many of them you also give out many tips and tricks uh, which which is harder for you uh, because uh, it takes a lot of prep that no one realizes a 45 minute video might take 3 or 4 hours i'm guessing maybe less for you 
um so i i don't like to invest too much time in making these videos so you will see that like, i don't even edit those videos so i don't have i don't have any cuts maybe sometime when i'm going to grab a cup of water uh, then i pause the recording mm -hmm. so uh, i do it like that and um, before making the video i obviously go through stuff and um, since i don't prepare a lot i also make mistakes in the video so i have some videos which have some bugs but people are people are intelligent if, if they are looking at each and every line of code they will figure out okay there's, there's a problem there and then i try to just write in one of the comments uh, that there is a mistake here so for me if i'm spending uh, 45 minutes uh, if i'm creating a video of, of like 45 minutes then i'm spending maybe around one and a half two hours max well wow, okay on the whole thing yeah so I, i'm not spending a lot of time and yeah that's one of the reasons i also make a lot of mistakes from time to time it definitely looks more natural that way compared to other channels yeah but you do have to prepare a little bit beforehand so it's not like i i'll, I'll just go and um i'm uh, i remember everything so even i need to google and uh, yeah it's like that i need to i need to have some references on different libraries and stuff so did, did you expect uh, sorry did did you expect uh, to get to this audience or i i still behind on that vision is is there any aspect that uh, that's been gratifying for you that you didn't expect to come out of this effort i mean when when i started i didn't know that people will be so, like it so much and there are still a lot of people who haven't subscribed so but that's you subscribe <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah i i i'm i'm very thankful to people that uh, they join and they like the videos and uh, the premieres and the live sessions have now, now they they started with uh, like 30 people watching to now they there are uh, 200 people watching 150 people watching so yeah that's that's pretty nice and uh, it feels good and i receive a lot of good comments some bad comments obviously but most of them are good comments and um people are very thankful for uh, many different videos and uh, um people also get interested in doing machine learning and uh, like i created a video on building the web app like this one here yes so i i receive messages from people like uh, nobody has explained it this way although what i explain is quite simple and people also said that okay maybe you can try to use this library maybe you try to use dash try to use fast api things like this and now i have ideas for future videos so they also help me uh, by asking questions and um yeah i'm i'm very thankful to the, to the people as long as they are liking it yeah as you mentioned it's community driven but it also helps the community i i think i'm not too sure but uh, in one of the recent competitions that just ended uh, you had shared a few starter materials and it led to many people actually just starting on the competition and not only that but also ending up in the middle zone a, a few of them at least Yeah yeah I um, I I received a f couple of messages from people who are thankful that I created these tutorials and uh, um some people got medals because of this but uh, that doesn't make me sad it makes me happy so I in this recent competition I dropped from first rank to ninth rank so it was it was a bit disappointing and um, uh but I'm um, And then i saw the models created by the first second third position people and they invested a little bit more time in the model and i think i should have also done that and i didn't so it's okay it's ninth is still not bad right and um, yeah i shared a lot in this competition so the model that i use for ninth position has already been shared in a different way but it has mm -hmm. it there so and it's like part of one of my tutorials that's amazing uh, before before i even start talking about the book you mentioned uh, you you're active on kaggle and you're in the middle zone in the gold medal zone for no uh, i i don't think people can appreciate how how difficult that is you creating youtube tutorials you're active on uh, you sharing knowledge on linkedin twitter even instagram and you're writing the book how, how do you balance all of these activities even it's it's is it even humanly possible and i i know for a fact that right now you're just a one man person team um yeah um 
I mean, I'm not always active everywhere. So if I kaggle, then I I do it in the evening or do it in the morning. I still work, uh, and um, I uh, the YouTube thing is basically more like it's it's a weekend thing. So a Saturday or Sunday, I create the video, and that's I how you spend it. your weekends. <laughs> that's how i spend my weekends and uh, it's not advisable to go outside right now so it's better to be home and uh, yeah uh, instagram is something that i recently started so from time to time i'm just posting uh, pictures there so uh, if I, if i create a video i will post about it on every channel <laughs> yeah so that's how i'm spending my time and it it's nice to uh, talk to people to answer their queries uh, some 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 have like um, really silly questions but some have good questions so it's it's nice talking to them and um, uh, trying to help them as much as i can do you have any productivity tips for someone who's uh, even mind blown by all of these things um so i i try to so <laughs> um right now my routine is not good my daily routine but uh, i uh, i used to wake up a little bit early and then work on something new um and uh, also go to gym from time to time <laughs> but that's not happening anymore yeah. and then go to work come back uh, spend some time with your family and uh, have dinner uh, and then spend a couple of hours more uh on working on something new and interesting so it can be a kaggle competition it can be one uh, course uh, machine learning course or something like that or anything anything new and then uh, go back to sleep and sleep for like uh, i don't know if you're young if you're a student you can sleep for 6 hours <laughs> yeah so i think 6 to 8 hours sleep is fine okay so it's it's still curiosity driven for you and uh, slight more, more like organized chaos if i may uh it's chaos <laughs> i don't know how <laughs> organized it is but uh, yeah um it, it's it's like if i if i get interested in something i cannot leave that so i try to finish that and then move to the next thing so if if i got an idea for like a video or there is a new kaggle competition and i i just want to build something so that i can i can just have a quick start in that competition and i try to build it in such a way that if i am investing few hours like 5 6 hours now then i'm in the future for next versions of that so like improving the model improving the hyperparameters or adding augmentations and all that kind of thing i don't have to spend much time so i code in uh, that kind of modular way where you have different modules so if there which is which was your first for, video i think which that, that was my first video yeah so have a config and you just change a little bit in the config and then you don't have to worry about so once you have created the pipeline just make sure you can reuse it and i apply it to many different things so even in my youtube videos i've created a video about uh, training bird sentiment model and the next one was about creating an api using the bird sentiment model so i'm just reusing what i've already built Yeah. and i'm i'm writing a little bit of code but that's not a lot because if i start from scratch all the time the video the 45 minutes video will become like 3 hours video nobody will watch <laughs> yeah yeah another thing that i've uh, i've realized is many people like me who just rely on online resources to learn they're not the best uh, they don't follow the best coding practices and uh, you you're cognizant of you you share very good co- uh, coding practices but again people might not be uh, strict enough to follow them any any advices for someone who's just relying on freely available materials on how they can improve their uh, programming skills yeah so freely available you're you're right i mean freely available materials are not going to teach you how to uh, be good at coding i'm i'm trying to do some some of my part there but i have not seen anybody talking so everyone everyone is just using jupyter notebooks and um, they are not showing how this can be done in a more modular way how this works in the industry so um it's it's very difficult so these kind of things as a fresher if if you're learning these uh, learning machine learning then you won't learn these kind of things on your own even yeah. using uh, these self taught 
uh, tutorials and videos and stuff. So if you have to learn this, you have to be in, in the industry. You have to go to the industry and see how people work there. But what you can do is you can pick up a library. Like, I don't know what library you like. Scikit-learn, the most popular machine learning library, right? Yep. So pick up Scikit-learn, go to their repository and see how they write code. Go and go to their pull request and see, okay, there is this guy who is developing something new for scikit-learn or fixing a bug, then what the what, what are the different types of comments? So then you will learn a lot like, okay, fix this. Um, uh, Pep8 is, uh, uh, you have to take a look at Pep8 or yeah. Uh, yeah, Flake8, these kind of things. So you will come across these terms, then you try to see, okay, what uh, has this person changed in the pull request? So I I used I get learned to learn quite a lot about good coding practices in the in the very beginning. Uh, yeah, but it was difficult. But uh, then you have to practice on your own. Like you mentioned, there's this disconnect. I at least hold a very strong opinion against institutes. So universities might not be the most practical. Then come in the freely available resources, which are slightly more practical. And then there's the industry, which is actually the practical True. practicality side of things and then you yeah. you need to sit down and actually invest efforts even though it will make you feel dumb but you're actually learning at least when you're just starting out on these best practices yeah 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 true i mean <laughs> you are not so it's it's very difficult for you to learn kubernetes or how to deploy stuff in production if you're not working in an industry so you can I don't know if you can even do it from a book. So, uh, okay, I will come to this later. But uh, like, if you have a tutorial on Kubernetes, okay, this is how it's done. Okay, fine. But when you go to the industry, things are going to be very different. So yeah. uh, you, there are some things that you will get to learn while working. You, you cannot, you can learn, you can learn on your own, obviously. But uh, you will get most of the knowledge while working in an industry. Practical Definitely. stuff. You, you mentioned book, which allows me to segue into your book. Why, why did you decide to start writing the book? And I had the privilege of uh, reviewing a few chapters. You you had sent me them to check them out. But th thanks for that. I am pretty excited about it. Can you can you give us your motivation and an overview of the book? Yeah, first, first of all, thanks a lot for helping me review it. And... Um, I I planned to write this book two years ago. So I think if, I, I don't know, if you go to my LinkedIn and search for my some of my old posts, I, even I haven't done that, but you will find that approaching almost any machine learning problem, I'm writing this book. So something like this, you will find two years ago. So it and was always on your mind. It was, it was on my mind for a long time. So it, it comes from this blog post I wrote. Okay. approaching almost any machine learning problem and since then i thought i'm going to write a book with the same title and uh, i started two two and a half years ago but i wrote I, I wrote like one chapter of it now i in the new version i've changed most of that chapter okay. because things change right and this year um not this year last year i thought i have to get this done so i started i resumed it and uh, I, I thought I have to make it cheap so that anybody can buy it and I'm also making sure like if, if you're not able to afford it and if you really want it then I will send you a copy but only if you're not able to afford it because I'm trying to make it as cheap as possible and um, like by not going with the publisher I don't have any yeah. middleman so I can make the price really low so yeah it's a book about Applied machine learning. There's not a lot of mathematics in it. Um, there's things like if you have categorical variables, what should you do? What should your approach be? So things like this. And um, there's a lot of code. And uh, um, yeah, the thing that I was talking about, uh, like um, putting model into production. So there is a chapter on uh, productionizing and reproducible code but I, then i also thought should i include like deploying on kubernetes mm. but how is it going to look like like 
in figure one, click on uh, <laughs> this link, and in figure two, write the version number. <laughs> so it's so for these kind of things, it's better to just make a tutorial video. So I'm I'm also planning to do that to combine this stuff from this book to uh, YouTube tutorials. So yeah, I hope people like it, and uh, it's coming out very soon now. It's done, so I'm just revising it a little bit now. <laughs> I am very excited about it, as you already know. But uh, I'm also I, very excited and scared. <laughs> I I also want to talk about pricing. I don't think you should really discuss pricing when it comes to education. But you were very cognizant of keeping it at a very entry level price, even for Indian students. Many people don't realize this. Books are priced according to Western standards, which becomes expensive unless there's continental sure. pricing. Sure, sure. So, um, yeah, I. Um, so mostly, most of the time, these kind of books will cost around thirty, forty, fifty, or sixty dollars. I've like I purchased a book for seven hundred dollars. I put it on the <laughs> So yeah, so these um, books are expensive these days, and it's only because of publishers. So if you have a well-known publisher, it's going to be a very expensive book. So well, what I decided was to self-publish. So I will be selling the books for fifteen dollars, and now I'm 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 rethinking the prices again. So I am thinking of make it making it even lower. Okay. Because yeah, because I I talk to many people, so it it's going to be like like if you if, if you take a look at uh, India, right? So I think nine hundred thousand rupees is a lot of money. So. For 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 students, for, students, for freshers, yes. yeah, right. For freshers, for students, it's a lot of money. So I'm thinking of uh, decreasing it even further, or making some kind of student plan or something like that, so you can student discount, so you can buy it a little bit cheaper. So. For for my Western friends, it's it's close to an I think Starbucks coffee price. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> definitely frappuccino. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, for 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 Europe and US, I would say the price is quite cheap, given um, the number of pages in the book, and I hope the kind of knowledge in the book. <laughs> yeah. yeah, can can you walk us through the writing process? Because uh, I, I think it's it's a very practical book. There's there's some theory, but not a lot of it. Uh, how did you find that balance, and uh, what was important to you while writing the book? So, what's what's uh, one thing you expect people to get out of it? So, so uh, like I've I've seen this a lot of times and experienced it myself. Like you can be good at theory, but uh, when it comes to problems, solving real world problems, then people face a lot of problems, right? And so like categorical variables, it's a very simple thing, but no one like in, in the lectures, no one is teaching, okay, what are the different ways to handle categorical variables? So um, this is one of the things. And when it comes to NLP or images, people understand what deep neural networks are, but they don't understand how to apply it, where to apply the augmentations, right? People don't understand where to add the normalization. Okay, why did we choose this value for normalizing for mean and standard deviation? So people don't know that. Um, so that's what the book is comprised of. So um, my thought process was, I'm I'm very 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 applied guy, right? My thought process was like you're a Kagler at heart. Yeah, yeah, so let, let's let's take example of Kaggle. So the book is for people who want to start with Kaggle but are struggling or are scared. So these kind of people are like uh, you've done some courses mm -hmm. um, on any any kind of uh, online course, right? Uh, and you're learning the theory, but alongside you want to start with some project. So you you let's say you learned about linear regression, logistic regression, and now you want to apply it. So you find the different types of problems in the book where you can apply it. And uh, uh, then you, uh, that that gives you a quick start. So obviously, it's not going to make you the best and win you gold medals in Kaggle competition. Yeah. So that's that's a different story. But it can give you this start that you need. So book is not for beginners, and I I'm I'm saying that uh, uh, quite clearly, even in the description of the book, it's not for beginners. 
but it's for beginners who are doing some theoretical courses or uh, um, have done something already. So if they have learned some theory, so then you can pick up this book. Or if you're planning to use this book, then you can use it along with some kind of uh, theory courses. If if I can rephrase your answer, it's it's for people who want to get started in the fastest applied fashion and can pick up the necessary theory and Google it up as as required. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to do that. So, I mean, there are different ways to learn, right? So you can also pick up this book and Google the terms, and you will learn. Yeah. So, um, it's it's uh, it's not very difficult. Machine learning is easy, right? <laughs> yeah. I- Personally, I think the, the, the two sides, uh, getting into it is, is easier than it looks and getting to the top is much harder than it looks. Yeah, I mean, getting to the top is hard for any field. Any field. Right. Um, some people think like they can learn machine learning in three months. Maybe you can. <clears throat> but it's, it's very difficult. So they plan for three months. They plan for the plan becomes six months and plan becomes one and a half years. Right. So it takes time. It takes time to excel in something. And it also requires like if you're a student, you can invest more time. But if you are a professional, you don't have that much time that you can invest. Probably you can if you can invest one, two hours a day, that's going to be a lot uh, that you're investing in learning something new. Right. So then you have to find some time over the weekends. And um, because yeah. if, if you really want to do something, you have to think like, okay, I have to spend some time learning all these things now. Then I don't have to do it after a few months. So yeah, that's that's the thing. <laughs> Definitely. We, we just talked about uh, who's, who's expected to pick up the book. Uh, what all will they learn from the book? Speaking of the main content, I think you've covered a wide variety of things. Uh, what all can one expect out of it? So uh, yeah, I have covered a lot. So the chapter on uh, cross validation is huge. Chapter chapter on categorical variables is huge. Um, I have discussed evaluation metrics. I have discussed uh, natural language processing. So one one kind of problem, and um, I've also discussed some image problems. Um, then there is production and deploying there is what have you not discussed <laughs> uh, there is like everything so the, my idea so there is feature engineering hyperparameter optimization there is there are things about stacking and ensembling stuff so there is everything um, but not everything is in like too much details right because if if i have to if i have to write something about categorical variables and to see like I have written around 40 pages for categorical variables. Yeah. And that I find less, right? I've written 40 pages for uh, approaching text classification. I can write a book about it. So that's the thing. Um, I, can, I cannot compress, I cannot include everything. So I've selected the best things and the most important things and left everything else to uh, the reader. So like, if you, if you want to learn further, then obviously there, there's a lot more to learn. So what do you suggest for such people? Where, where should they go after uh, reading the book? There's also, I think your videos which fall into a nice connect for after the book, what, what other recommendations would you have? See, you have, you have reviewed the book and you know that it's not a, it's not a traditional book, right? So it's not like you read it once and then you are done with it because you are not going to remember all the code snippets. You have to come back to the book from time to time. So pick a problem, start working on it, and then uh, try to find different other references. When when you've applied everything from the book, try to find other references and uh, uh, try to improve on your model. And at some point you have to say like you're done, then you move to the next project. So it's more like, okay, for building a portfolio kind of, if you're doing one project every month or every two months. So in the end you have six projects or even 10 projects in one year. And that's a lot of machine learning projects that you can do. I have, yeah. I, I don't even remember how many data sets I've talked about in the book, but um, the thing is I've used data sets for different purposes. So I show a data set, okay, it has categorical variables. I'm not, I'm not going to build like an end to end model on it, but I'm going to describe how, um, how applying this processing will affect the results or what other different types of processing you can apply. 
there, there are many code examples in your book. I, I, I think it would be close to 50, 70% code even. And every single snippet is a self-contained example of it. Yeah, itself, yeah. So I think. every single snippet is something that you can run on your computer. <laughs> and you can extend. <laughs> if you have the data, yeah. yeah you can run and uh, you can extend and you can reuse. So yeah, it's, it's like that. And um, I have created all those snippets. And uh, it's not like I've created in one month. It, it has been going on since several years. So yeah, I've, I've just compiled everything I had and put some of it in this book. I, I think I had the most important contribution to the book, which was in the opening page where I suggested, and I won't mention the name of the drink, but I suggested you to change it to, you should pick up a cup of chai <laughs> and sit down yeah. and try and code and not just shift enter through all of this or not just... Uh, run all of this code, but actually try to replicate it. True. Um, yeah. The line was there. I just, I just helped him change the drink that, that was my contribution for the I'm, audience. I'm still thinking about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> that is hard. <laughs> so the, yeah, the thing is, um, you have the book and then a lot of people. So even when I make tutorials, a lot of people ask about code, right? Why do you need the code? I have shown you everything end to end in this video. So just watch the video. If you just watch the video and code it yourself, you will learn a lot more than when I share the code uh, with you and uh, you just copy paste it. So you will learn a lot less. So yeah, the book is meant to be like, keep it as a reference and uh, look at things. And even if you, if you, even if you copy paste from the book, you cannot copy paste from a paperback book, but if even if you if you um, do that, just like keep the book in front of you and see the code and write it and try to understand. So I've also <laughs> given comments for each and every line of code, or whatever required, and uh, I think that will help people. I I hope it will help people. Some some people. Again, to highlight it, it's in the interest of the content creator to mention their GitHub links and put, put the content out there. But I believe you do, don't do it for a reason so that other people actually sit down and replicate uh, what you've done and yeah. go ahead and apply. It. I do it, but like after taking a few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll live with this without code for a few weeks and then I will share the code. Yeah. Awesome. So for a final question, do you see any other books coming in the future? Or do you have any plans for <laughs> any other series of books? So when I was writing um, the text classification chapter, so why I'm saying text, text classification, because I wanted to, I wanted to include a lot more mm. than text classification or regression, but I, I could not, and I could not even finish text classification fully like I, I could not do it uh, I'm, I'm not very like happy about it. I'm happy but I'm not like you're not uh, contented yeah, yeah true and I could write hundreds of pages about uh, natural language processing and uh, so I plan to write another book after this one and that's that's going to be uh, focusing only on NLP awesome well, yeah. Do you think that'll come out this year as well? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Depends on how much time I have. But NLP is something that I can write. I can, I can write about text problems uh, a lot. So I think I wrote around 50 pages about uh, text data in this book, including all the code samples, obviously. And uh, I think that was done in, uh, I think, two or three days. So for, for text problems, I can write a lot and um, I've, I've gained quite a bit of experience in that area. So yeah, it comes naturally. I don't have to think a lot. Awesome. Abhishek, you're doing so much for, for us, for the community. How can we support your efforts? You're supporting me, man, all the time. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm asking on behalf of the audience. <laughs> you, you, have, you, have, you have like the, uh, on the big screen, you have uh, the picture of the book. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really enjoyed even the preview of the books. I'm grateful to you for that. You are supporting me all the time. So yeah, and I'm, I'm thankful for everyone in the community who has been supporting me. So yeah, it's nice. And I also like criticism. So uh, if somebody says something again, so this is not uh, like 
if I make a tutorial and if there's something wrong. So I always say in the end, like if there is something wrong, then let me know in the comments. And uh, when people do that, I try to improve on them. Awesome. Uh, I'll, I'll do a plug for you. Please subscribe to Abhishek's channel on YouTube. Please find him on Instagram. Follow him there on Twitter and on LinkedIn as well. Yeah, thank you very much, Sanyam. Thanks, thanks so much. Thank you for joining me on the podcast and for all of your amazing contributions to the community and hopefully a lot more very soon. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed the show, please be sure to give it a review or feel free to shoot me a message. You can find all of the social media links in the description. If you like the show, please subscribe and tune in each week to Chai Time Data Science.